Hi everyone. So the film Interstellar came out this week and I've been lucky enough to go see it already. And it's a really, really good film. So you should definitely go check it out. And a lot of people have been praising the science behind the film and saying it's very good. But on the other hand, a lot of people have been saying that sometimes the science has been dodgy or sometimes it's been ignoring parts of the science. So I thought I'd go through the film and the science in the film and try and explain which parts are real and which parts are very good. And this isn't me bashing the film or the science in a way. I'm just going to be going through some of the really interesting parts, explaining what they are and saying if bits them they left out and which bits they took some kind of artistic license with. Um, if you haven't seen the film already, this is obviously going to contain spoilers so go watch the film because it's really good and then come back and watch the video. The film begins with a blight on earth affecting all the crops which means that scientists have to find another habitable planet in the universe. Now they find a wormhole near Saturn they decide to go through to see if they can find any other habitable planets. Now a wormhole is real, can we actually use them to travel across the universe? Well yes, Einstein's theory of relativity suggests that actually wormholes probably do exist. We just haven't seen any so far but theoretically they do exist out there. But the slightly dodgy science here comes when it talks about creating wormholes. Now in the film, a future advanced civilization creates a wormhole which allows them to travel a specific point in space. But at the moment, with our technology, we can't create a wormhole. This is a very dense area of space and we just can't do this, let alone one that takes you a very specific part of the universe. But this is described as being created by an advanced civilization. So who knows what will happen in the future? Perhaps we will be able to create wormholes. Now after going through the wormhole, the crew arrives at a planetary system with a super massive black hole in it. This is a very large area of space and a black hole is something that nothing can escape from, not even light, hence why it's called black hole. There are three planets in the system. The first planet is orbiting around the black hole and they describe something called time dilation. This is as they get close to the black hole on the planet, time begins to move slower on the planet. This means that when they're on the planet, for every hour that passes on the planet, seven years passes for anyone on Earth, which is away from the black hole, or the spaceship, which is also away from it. And this is real, this happens in real life. And we've actually seen this when we've taken clocks up into space and taken them at very fast speeds or near very large masses. So time dilation is real, and it's really, really good that they actually put this into the film. However, being this close to the black hole also has some really negative effects. The large gravitational pull from the large mass of the black hole creates some incredible tidal effects on anything near it, such as the planet, the spaceship and the astronauts. And this would just act to tear them apart, to rip them into small pieces. And this would happen in reality, everything would just be torn apart that gets too close to it. And you can see how strong these gravitational forces are by the giant waves on the planet. Now this isn't just a, a, a visual effect, this is actually what would really happen. The giant total waves would happen on the planet because all the oceans on the planet would be drawn towards the black hole. And this is just what happens here on Earth. We have the waves and the tides because of the moon pulling it. So the time dilation stuff in the film is really, really good. But unfortunately, all the planet and the astronauts would just be torn apart before they got too close. Finally, our lead man and our hero falls into a black hole. And he's surprised as he does this that he isn't torn and ripped apart by the gravitational tidal forces from the black hole, or he isn't killed by the radiation on the inside. Instead, he finds himself in some strange dimension where he can control time and he can move through time. But his surprise is also our surprise, because we know that the gravitational pull of the black hole is so strong that he would be ripped and torn apart. Something called spaghettification, where he's literally stretched into a long stream of particles like a piece of spaghetti. However, the problem with getting so close to a black hole, especially this one which has a load of bright gas around the outside, is the incredible heat and radiation coming off of this gas. Now the gas is obviously extremely bright, you can see this in the film, it's an incredibly bright white light coming from this gas, and that's because it's so hot. Now by getting close enough to slingshot themselves around the black hole to gain lots of speed, they'd have to get incredibly close to this gas. And this gas is incredibly hot, the deadly radiation, and sadly, it would probably just boil away the people inside and it would just actually melt the spaceship, most likely. Now, this wouldn't be as an interesting ending to the film, it would be kind of disappointing. And it's really incredible that they do include the science behind slingshotting yourself around a large mass to gain speed. And they get a really good visual representation of the black hole. So, perhaps we can let them off the idea that the astronauts probably would have melted long before this point, because it really is an incredible bit in the movie. But the definition of a black hole means that nothing can escape. It's called black hole because not even light can escape it. 
Now the idea is that information cannot escape the black hole. This means light, you, anything, nothing can escape from it. Which means it'd be unlikely to be able to communicate to his daughter towards the end of the film, or to communicate with anyone, or ever get outside the black hole. Once you go in, you're stuck in, and there's no way of getting you or anything else out. But all I've done so far is discuss the points in the film which don't seem to line up with the reality of science. But also there's some incredible parts of the film that really are very scientific. For example, the spaceship in the film is described as being rotating, and we see it rotating around, and this creates an artificial gravity. And this is real, this is reality. If you were to do this and have a space station that could rotate around, there'd be an artificial gravity pushing people towards the outside part of the inside of the spaceship, and they would feel as if they were down here on Earth with normal gravity. This is a really incredible thing, they include this in the film, and they did it very accurately as well. The visual appearance of the black hole is also incredibly well done. Now, actually, there were lots of computer simulations and work done to try and see what a black hole and a wormhole would actually look like for you to see them. And there were lots of simulations run that took many, many hours to come up with. And so, actually, what you see the black hole and the wormhole looking like in the film are actually what they may look like in reality. So this is really good that they really went to this level of detail to try and show what these things would look like. So in conclusion, some of the science is a little bit dodgy and some of it's been missed out. But overall, the science is very, very good. And they've just taken some artistic license on some of it to make it a more interesting film. And it works. It's a really, really great film and visually fantastic. So it's worth going to check out. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the video. It's something slightly different, but I thought it would be kind of interesting. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, uh, check me out on Twitter, at Ucastronaut. But thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you all soon.